Hey guys, it's Laura. I'm quite excited actually. I've got two bits of news to share with you, but I'm going to wait till the end of the video for that. Today we're doing cartoon nails. I was so excited to do this because it's one of the very first attempts at nail art I ever did. And by ever I mean like three months ago? Okay, to start doing the cartoon nails, I applied a base coat. It makes a much smoother surface for the polish to go on. I was inspired from the penguin nail art I did, and I'll put an info card up to link you to that video if you want to see it. After I put the base coat on, I then put on a layer of really thick black. Now this black is very pigmented, so it goes on in one coat, and it usually goes on smooth. This black background is eventually going to be the outline of my cartoony nails, or most of it anyway. The only freehand line I'm going to need to do will be the tip. Now I'm using a technique here that I call candy floss cleanup. It probably doesn't need to have a name because it's such a simple way to do things. But with a slightly wettened cuticle stick or cocktail stick, usually wettened with nail varnish remover, I scoop up some cotton woolly fluffiness from the middle of a cotton wool pad and it feels a bit like scooping up candy floss from one of the big candy floss machines. I then squish it down as tight as I can so it maintains the point and dip that in more nail polish remover and use that to get off most of the mess around my nail. After putting the black base on I then got the white polish that I was going to use to create the middle of my design. When I was doing this for my penguin nails and I was trying to get the belly all nice and even I realised it might be a good technique to try with my cartoon nails. And here is the hugest difference between the two attempts. In my first go at doing this design, I painted on the colour I wanted and then tried to do the outline afterwards. It didn't work too well, as you can see from this photo here. Back then I wasn't recording videos, so I don't have video evidence of it, but trust me, it was tough going. <laughs> as a complete surprise to absolutely no one at all, I was a little bit hasty in putting on my top coat base to put the colours on top of, it made them all come out really bright and really vibrant. It might have worked if I'd have just put black down and then the colour on top of it, but I feel this way it gave it the really cartoony effect without looking too dull or washed out. Because I've already done the white onto the black, it's left the outlines that I wanted. Okay, these colours really are really bright. I love them. There will be a full catwalk of nail polishes at the end of the video showing what I used and what colours they were. Like I did the first time I tried the design, you can do every single nail the same colour and that's probably the smartest move but I wanted to experiment a little bit, see which colours look best cartoonified. Because each colour is from a different company, the brushes are different thicknesses which meant every time I was putting the polish on I had to be careful and adapt to the different sizes. Because the other three sides of the outline have already been done, there was only one bit that I had to do free-handed. I used a black nail art pen that had a striping polish tip on it. And rather than using the nail art pen, I used the striping size to try and make the line go across the tip of my nail. It wasn't as easy as I thought it'd be. But again, at least I only had to focus on one side. Because I got really short nails, there was a lot of risk of getting nail polish all over the tips of my fingers as well. And by trying to avoid going over the edge of my nails, I ended up not going close enough to the edge of my nails. I finally figured out in one of my last videos how to open these nail art pens properly. And in a kit I got at Christmas, there was a white one. So I thought I'd use this white nail art pen to create a lovely little love heart. No, I had to test it out first, of course. Yep, my art skills are way up there. I was quite pleased doing this because I actually managed to line up the cartoon light reflection with the actual reflection of light on my nails. Mostly. You could do this as one straight line down and it would still get the same point across. I'm not 100% sure why I decided to break it up. But it looked good to me. Once I finished the reflector lines I put on a quick drying top coat. This was to protect the design inside and also to smooth everything out with all the different layers of nail polish that there were. In keeping with the aesthetic of being cartoon nails, 
God, could that sound more pretentious? I felt that the glossy top coat wasn't really cutting it. So for my absolute final layer, I added a matte top coat to dull the shine a little bit and give it a nice matte effect. After that was done, I did some candy floss cleanup and then added some cuticle oil around my nails to kind of rehydrate them a bit after so much nail polish remover. And then I was done. My cartoony nails with their matte top coat were finished. I wonder what it'd look like if my whole hand was a cartoon. Okay, I'm not so sure this filter works very well. How about we ignore this moment and jump to the nail polish catwalk? Starting with the Barry M 3-in-1 base coat, top coat and nail hardener. And then, in classic black, our Moyu black stamping polish. Next is our collection nail polish in French white, nice and thick. For the blue we have Maybelline Colour Show number 661, Ocean Blue. Now from Claire's, our Neon Electric Purple Polish. If we've got purple, we've got to go pink too with our Orly Polish. And this polish is known as Purple Crush. Now for the totally teal colour from China Glaze, known as Flying High. From my Rio Professional Collection is this very, very red nail polish. And from the same Rio Professional Collection that I got for Christmas, we have this black nail art pen. Here we also have a white nail art pen. <laughs> okay, I love doing that so much. I suppose you're looking for the announcements next, are you? Well, the first announcement is I've just started a Patreon, which is a way for you guys as my viewers to help support me to continue doing this. Patreon's a really simple way to support creators and it'll help me continue to create videos and maybe one day even improve upon the equipment I have or the technology I have to make my videos even better for you guys. The second announcement is that when I hit 50 YouTube subscribers I'm going to hold a little giveaway. I've just held a successful giveaway on Facebook and the winner, Kelly, is going to be receiving in the post a nail art kit. I'm going to be giving away the same nail art kit when I hit 50 YouTube subscribers. Thanks so much for watching my videos guys, I hope I'll see you all around soon. Bye!